All right, what's up guys? We're out here on a siding job in Edina, Minnesota. It's, well, it's January 29th, 2021, middle of winter. Building siding, not a problem. Anyway, we're gonna show you guys a few things here and just do kind of a basic siding component training and point a couple things out, try and keep it short and to the point. You can see the new dark blue siding is what's being put on. This is the old siding up here, so they've still got it on in a couple areas. You can see on this job, all that green underlayment, it's called a fan fold. So it comes in, in um, well, kind of accordion-like sheets. And uh, you take it out and nail it on to the uh the home and then they'll tape all the seams and this house actually has some pre-existing rigid foam insulation over top of the sheathing so that all that yellow rigid insulation stayed in place we don't replace that in this case with the siding but uh, yeah, in this house they've got again the fan fold. Um, we're gonna take a look at a few things. I'll show you guys some stuff. So we're just gonna look down at this material box here. So this is some scraps. Here you got just one lap of siding. They've got double four inch traditional lap siding here. It's what's going on. Royal Estate, it's a 0.044 inch thickness. Color here is natural slate super basic thing this is called the nailing fin so all siding gets nailed on through the nailing fin the next piece goes on and it locks into the top and then gets nailed in so the bottom of one piece will lock into this top piece pretty basic stuff um here you got some j channel so this j channel it's nailed in through the nailing fin and this is for around edges so if you come over here if we were to look at say the edge of the garage this is j channel here so the j channel gets nailed in siding goes on the butt end of the siding locks into that j channel each piece of siding gets nailed in another piece gets locked into the piece above Right here, you've got a J block. So these are mounting accessory blocks. Those will get mounted, <coughs> excuse me, those will get mounted um, to the siding anywhere you've got to install an exterior light, um, maybe a security sensor, different accessories that need to be mounted to the siding. Sometimes a doorbell, a doorbell J block might be a little smaller. Um, we come over here and take a peek down around these faucets, these hose bibs. We use split blocks, and so the split blocks. If you look, you take this cover off, and there's a, a little block back here that is split in two. So that way they can take it apart, wrap it around the pipe or whatever is protruding out of the siding and they secure it and then put the block on so those are split blocks we need those because you can't just run siding up to this faucet and cut a hole it looks like crap and in most places it's not going to pass code not that you won't see some houses out there where they try to do that type of thing but you don't want to be doing that it's not a good finished product here you've got some old dryer vents so depending on the vents if it's a vent cover we will replace it if it's a vent that's secured into the house so some of those vents actually get inserted in and they're taped um, inside to a duct those don't get replaced that'd be an hvac type of duty um, here we've got a window with an aluminum window wrap so aluminum window wraps like this are fairly common on homes built in the 80s and prior. 
And so these don't necessarily have to be replaced when we're doing a reside. But in this case, on some of the windows, the window wrap was cocked to the J channel. So when the old J channel was pulled off, it would affect some of the window wraps and we had to replace some of them. This one we were able to keep intact. But if you look down here, this one we couldn't. And so this one they'll end up replacing. Um, I think they'll end up just doing the whole thing. And if you look at these window wraps, they're angled out and they're not totally flat. So these get custom bent on a brake press. So we use rolled aluminum trim coil. I'll show you guys what that looks like. And you can get it in smooth or wood grain in a multitude of different colors, but the trim coil comes in big rolls like this here. And there we got some gray. Over here we got a little more gray. And they'll roll it out in whatever length they need, cut it to size, and then they can bend it on a manual brake press. I'm sure the guys have their brake press around here in the side or in the back. But if you look up top, some of those window wraps are going to have to get replaced. And the reason I'm popping out here is actually because underneath the aluminum on some of these window wraps, some of the wood was rotten. This one's not too bad, but on some of the other windows, the wood was totally rotted out. We're going to replace that wood. In this case, it's actually what they call a brick mold. So it measures about an inch and a half thick, two inches wide. It's got a little bevel in here. We're going to replace the brick mold, rewrap it in aluminum, and then they'll be good to go. But this is a big distinction. You'll see window wraps a lot of the time. It's not part of the window. It's just a piece of trim that is adhered to a border around the window. And they'll get nailed in. Sometimes they get cocked in on the edges really common stuff that we run into when the siders are working um, a lot of window wrap replacements just so you guys know some other components this area below the eave here this is called soffit so another basic component a lot of times you'll have vented soffit in this case this is solid non-vented soffit and it comes in sheets they're usually about 12 feet long and they'll come three or four panels wide so the guys cut them to length and then they get inserted piece by piece and they're held up by the edge of the fascia and usually f channel on the inside where they sit on top of the j channel for the siding so that's soffit um up here you can see you've got some of the center vented soffit and the reason they've got vented up there is for the roof ventilation and it's another key component so on the roof you'll have your turtle vents or turbines or maybe ridge venting up near the peak air will come in it, it intakes through the soffit and escapes out of the turtle vent or ridge venting or turbine venting so that way you've got good air circulation below the roof that way the attic space doesn't get too hot. If the attic space starts getting too hot, you get problems with ice dams, nails will pop and rise out of the decking. So they'll get holes in the shingles, you'll get shingle blistering, all sorts of different things that can pop up. Up here, again, you've got soffit, of course, which we touched on. But then this border here, this is called fascia. And then on the very top of the fascia, you got a little piece of drip edge that goes around the perimeter of the home. Up here, the triangular sections at the end of the gable that meet the, the eave there, those are called box returns. Um, we got some shutters here. These are gonna be detached and reset during the course of the project down spouts get detached and reset you got your outside corner post here a lot of times people like to do those in a different color just to give it a little accent or contrast guys got their pump jack set up these get secured into the roofing so typically what the guys will do 
is clear the snow off or obviously if it's summer you don't have to but they'll nail the um, pump jack straps in below the shingle so they'll pop a shingle up and nail it in below so that way there's not holes in the roof when they're done but these pump jacks the guys stand on them and they're able to raise them and lower them while they're working they'll keep them set up usually for the duration of the project and shift them around the house let's take a peek and see what else we've got here looks like they're done in the back they got some second story work to do when it gets really cold it's a little tough to work with vinyl because the pieces can become brittle they can snap and you can have some issues but you know if they snap a piece or if it cracks obviously they just replace it but around the windows you guys can see a few different things there's moldable tape that goes around the window you gotta have flashing tape it's code um you can see some of the old moisture wrap there tyvek tyvek always gets taped at the seams so here's some of your old tyvek or non-brand moisture wrap this is the pre-existing stuff it always gets taped at the seams. Anywhere you have a corner, they wrap the Tyvek around the corner four inches and then tape it. Otherwise, on the wall, they'll typically overlap by about two inches and then tape. Another big thing on the top of all windows is another code. I don't know how well we'll be able to see this, but there's a drip cap that you have to have on the top of every window door or opening that includes garage doors or any piece of horizontal trim this happens to be a plastic piece that came with the window um, a lot of times what will happen is we'll bend some aluminum trim coil to fit on top of all the openings or the trim and it's a z flashing and so it extends down over the top of the window like a cap and then runs up the wall another two inches. That's meant to flash the seam. Anywhere you have a seam, whether it's roofing or siding, you've got to flash it. Otherwise water is going to find its way in and people are going to have some big problems later on. Um, so this is a big thing, especially for working with the insurance company. And this has to be replaced. We got to get photos of it because it's something we need to charge for and bill for. Um, here you've got a gas fireplace vent. Those do not get replaced when we're doing siding. Those always remain. You got some power um, meters down there. It looks like an electrical box actually, probably for the AC unit. Those get detached and reset. Um, exterior lights always get detached and reset. Electrical outlets. So once the job is done, we'll have a electrician come out to the property. They'll reinstall any exterior lights, any electrical outlets. Um, some cities they have to pull permits to do that. The electrician takes care of that stuff. At the same time, that's the opportunity if the homeowner wants, they can install new lights at that time. Well, let's see, we've got one more side, I think. This covers most everything. You can see the guys are working. Looks like in this case, they actually doubled up with both fan fold and moisture wrap, which we don't have to do. I sent Franklin. Hi. Oh, Erlis, how you doing? Good to see you. I thought you were Franklin. I'm doing a training video. One of our siders right there, great guy. So in this case, they put the fan fold on and the moisture wrap, which we don't have to do you have to do one or the other to create a sealed envelope for the home but i sent both out figuring they'd use one or the other and we'd just return one in this case they doubled up not a big deal um <clears throat> a little more protection but definitely not needed um and you can see too on this fan fold it goes on with plastic cap nails so it's a nail with a, a plastic cap around it um, just so that way the material can't pull through the nail since the nail head's a little skinny it could easily poke through or pull through here you can see some of the window wraps that are going to go on and this is where they had some issues with that brick molding rotting out 
So we're gonna replace this brick molding here and replace the bottom piece, which had totally rotted away. We're gonna charge on that uh, about 125 bucks per window, just for labor and material. Um, not a lot of profit built into that. It's more of a courtesy. Once they're done getting the brick mold on, they'll throw the aluminum on and, and uh, get it cocked in and, and then proceed with the siding. Over here, you've got your electrical boxes. In this case, those don't need to be detached or reset. There we go, guys. I think that covers most, most everything. Do one final shot of the front. All in all, this project here, in the summer, it would take maybe six days. Cause you got longer days, better weather, easier conditions to work in. But the guys wanna make money too in the winter. We wanna build jobs. In the winter, you know, when it gets really cold, they'll take some days off. Otherwise they'll be out here working. But a job like this in the winter, if you're looking at a, you know, maybe a two week project. One last thing I'll show you guys up here. I'll show you the dormer flashing and the step flashing. So you can take a little peek and see what that looks like. Oscar, can you hold this for me real quick? Thanks, man. I'm just doing a training video here. So last piece, you guys can see the step flashing and the dormer flashing. So the dormer flashing will tuck behind the siding and it sits on top of the shingles. Again, that's to flash that seam where the roof meets the wall. You don't want water getting in there. Step flashing, you got a piece that goes underneath each course of shingling. They step it up, siding will go over top of that. It runs underneath the shingle about four inches. Again, you gotta have those seams flashed. It's gotta be there, it's code. You gotta have a functional product. There we go, guys. That's it. We'll see you on the next job.